architecture is really the art and science of turning fiction into fact. Sometimes uh, kind of real architectural life interferes with intellectual architectural life. There is no such thing as architecture. Hello everyone, this is Vikram Prakash and you are listening to Architecture Talk. Each episode we try and have a conversation with a contemporary thinker on the status of architectural thinking. I am in New York, it's February 2022 and I'm here for the opening of the new South Asian Modernism show uh, at MoMA uh, which features uh, about eight drawings of my father Aditya Prakash his architectural drawings and a few photographs. And in this context, uh, it is apposite for me to bring to you part two of my conversation with the architectural historian, William Curtis. If you haven't heard part one, which was two weeks ago, you should do that. But in any case, this conversation also stands on its own as Curtis details to us uh, his experience of meeting and working with the well-known Indian architect Balakrishna Doshi and details how he wrote his book on his life and work in the context of the broader narrative of Indian modernism in the world today. I hope you enjoy. As always, I would love to hear from you. Please reach out at vikram.prakash at gmail.com. Here we go. Yes, I mean, we, you know, during this 1983 uh, trip where we were uh, plunged into deepest India and staying in, you know, absolutely remote places and really through direct experience, trying to understand the language uh, of, of ancient Indian architecture. And this is terribly important, this direct experience with sketches, um, with, you know, uh, visiting and revisiting. Uh, there was no academic agenda. Uh, this was truly traveling and wandering in, in the old style. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm impressed you were doing like Indian buses and 12 hours in Indian buses. That's not for the faint hearted. No, we were tough in those days and my wife still is, but uh, we had a discipline where everything had to go into each a small bag, including yeah. film and notebooks. Yeah. Um, anyway, so we rumbled into... Um, uh, into Ahmedabad, and uh, our, our plan was very much just to explore Ahmedabad and especially see the Corbusier buildings. Mm -hmm. However, it so happens I had, of course, knowledge of Doshi. Yeah. Uh, I had seen Doshi and Korea give a lecture together in tandem in the Graduate School of Design in 1974 and was very taken with their housing and Kachinjunga, et cetera, et cetera. Right. And, and then occasionally Doshi would visit the schools in America and he was giving a talk at MIT, I think in 81, and I was invited to have lunch with him. Uh -huh. and, and we hit it off. He said, if you ever come to Ahmedabad, do look me up. And I thought, well, that's nice of you to say that, but I mean, you know, I mean, people say those things. Anyway, so I had a phone number in our bag. And we were installed in a not particularly pleasant hotel, uh, by the Sabramati, it was not the Park Hotel, it was some other sort of medium level uh, joint. So it wasn't and, the Kama Hotel, you know, Charles Korea's hotel. No, no, it wasn't the Kama, it was a much lesser hotel. Okay. And, and, um, and then I said to Catherine, I said, do we bother Doshi? Uh, she said, look, uh, you know, there's no harm, you know. So um, I went to the front desk and I said, can you place a call, please? Yes, sir. Yeah. <laughs> that a person answered and said, hello, yes, I'll put you through to Mr. Doshi. And uh, hello, Doshi here. I said, Mr. Doshi, I don't know if you remember me. My name is William Curtis. Uh, wait, of course I remember you. Uh, <laughs> and I, I learned it even more when we got there because actually a copy of Modern Architecture since 1900, the first edition had arrived three days before, which <laughs> happens to contain a chapter with Doshi's buildings in it already. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> so this helped, I, I would say. Anyway, he said, well, well, where on earth are you? I said, well, we're in a little hotel by, by the river. Well, we can't have that. You must, you know, I'll send a driver. You can come and have tea, but bring your bags with you. <laughs> so uh, 45 minutes later, you know, an uh, ambassador car, boom, 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 turns up. <laughs> and we hopped into the car. We drove out along 
the western suburbs and in those days it got thinner and thinner with a little bit a few camels wandering around and, uh, yeah. and eventually this middle landscape if you like where Sangat is situated Sangat being his studio yeah uh, as you know but I should say that for the reader and, um, and I, but but for the for the listeners it should be it's not like that anymore around there, around Satellite Road. It's jam-packed with stuff. But I remember what you're talking about. It was used well, to be an open road and Sangat was off of that, yeah. yeah Sangat was poised between country and city, which it is in its you know, ideology. Yeah. Uh, and now, as you say, it's completely surrounded by huge flats and, I don't know, maybe yeah. another 10 kilometers of development to the west. Quite so. Cool. We arrived in this thing, which of course I had studied before, you know, the, the low vaults, the diagonal route, the passage through past the, the jars and the vases, this uh, low theater of grassy steps. I mean, right, right, all absolutely right. wonderful. And, and then we arrived and there was uh, this uh, beaming figure of, 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 of Doshi. Yeah. And, and he said, well, come in, come in, come in. And because we had some tea and we sat in his office, we had the picture of Corbusier always there, his guru. Yes, yes, yes. Uh, and uh, he said, look, uh, I'm thrilled that, you, that you've uh, looked look me up. I do remember you very well and your curiosity about India. Um, tell me what you've been doing. I said, well, you know, we've done this, we've done that. Oh, oh wow, wow, my goodness, you know, that's fantastic. How terrific. Listen, he said, don't waste your money on a hotel. At the back of Sangha, we have a little apartment with two low beds on concrete <laughs> rafts. Um, we'll be happy there and save the money to hire drivers to go off and look at things around, such as Modera, you know, the mm. great yeah. temple. Incredible, incredible temple, yeah. Yeah, exactly. So this is, this is the way it started. And we just totally hit it off. It was a wonderful yeah. um, sympathy, you could say. And the same with Catherine. Yeah. And he said, look, you know, you're here. I want you to meet the family. I want you to spend, you know, we, we have to discuss things whenever we can. So we were drawn into the, the Doshi tribe just like that. And uh, it was wonderful. Uh, and uh, there'd be long discussions out at Sangat, but there was also going home in the evening, having right. delicious vegetarian meals. Um, and uh, one evening we went into the garden. He said, I want to record you talking about how you think you can learn, the modern architect can learn today from something like the Elephanta Cave, which you have talked about endlessly because I was bowled over by Elephanta. Yeah. He said, it's the whole problem of, of absorption and transformation. Of course, I mean, you know, Mr. Doshi, you know, yeah, don't yeah. call me Mr. Doshi, call me Doshi. Yeah. Um, and and it, it, these, these were just wonderful. So here I had, if you like, the perfect person who was the living link between the, the, the force of Corbusier and the depth of Corbusier and the philosophy of Corbusier and the depths and depths of Indian tradition. And this was walking, walking example was, was Doshi. This is exactly what he was about. And so this sort of hit the nail on the head for me and for, uh, and for him. So that, that's the way uh, this all started. Right. So... Uh... So you're sitting in Sangath and you're sitting in his home, this beautiful modernist home. Uh, and you must be lecturing also at SEP. Did you do a lecture or two at SEP at, at that time? Uh, no, but uh, curiously enough, now this is something that may sort of astonish you. Um, we were actually based in Bangkok for this six months, uh, uh, I think I mentioned. Um, so Ind India was a big piece. It was like two and a half, three months, but we had also traveled up country, uh, in, in Thailand, eventually we traveled around Indonesia. It yeah. was a total immersion in Southeast Asia. Uh, right. And the, fo the following year was Sri Lanka, but not that year. So there we were in, in India, having been in India for about, I don't know, five or six weeks in Ahmedabad. But just before leaving, despite the fact that our bags were supposed to be very light, I had put a few slides of the um, parliament building in Chandigarh and of the parliament in Bangladesh. And I have no idea irrationally why on earth I would overcharge uh, uh, my bag with that, but I did. So when it was not CEPT, it was Doshi himself said, you know, since you're here, we'd love somehow for you to share your ideas with invited guests. Yeah. I said, 
well, I mean, if, uh, how do you mean? Well, could you give a talk of some kind? Yeah. I said, actually, I could, and I could even give a talk, strangely enough, about those two buildings which obsess me, one which I've seen three yeah. years ago, the other which I still haven't seen, but will see eventually, and have written about in notably, you know, Perspector or here or there. And he said, what a wonderful idea. So it was set up on the grassy steps at night, and, and uh, I don't know, 30 or 40 people turned up with a projector, you know, in someone's lap, you know. And uh, I started off and, and uh, you know, talked about why I thought these were such profound works of architecture, uh, that the ideas behind them, the symbolism, the this, the that. And, uh, and then about halfway through the talk, there was a the smell of roasting meat. And I thought, what? I mean, these are vegetarian people, I mean, what, what is this? And then one of my favorite slides caramelized because a mosquito had got into the lamp. Uh, <laughs> so there was a, a cooked mosquito in the, in the center of the city. And anyway, among the people there was Anant Raje, who I met for the first time, who I think was director of the school at that time. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And um, afterwards we all pushed off to a quality restaurant. Do you remember these? The, <laughs> yes, of the, course. Yeah. Semi-Western style. Yeah. And, and of course he was a real meat eater. He had a, what he called a sizzler, you know. <laughs> <laughs> and I just have to say that it, it was immediate with, with everybody. There was yeah. a feeling of coming home. Right. Uh, in, you know, I can different. imagine. I can totally imagine. And so many registers, it must feel like a coming home. I mean, it's India, it's these fantastic modernists, but then there's also the presence and memories of both Khan and Corbusier and the entire sort of... Uh, High modernist milieu of, of patrons and 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 uh, uh, the Sarabhais and so on. Did you meet this sort of the whole 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 uh, community? Eventually, not not all on this first occasion. But of course, among the first things that was done was arranging for us to see all four Corbusier uh, uh, buildings, uh, which included the Sarabhai compound. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, but we met Manorama. Yes, she yeah. was like the sort of grand duchess, you know. Yeah, yeah. In, sure. In, um, and um, and in fact, it was wonderful having her personality in those vaulted spaces, you know, it sort of went together. Um, I was absolutely captivated by Sarah Bai, um, you know, the, the kind of invisibility of this house, you know. The, incredible house, incredible. It's, it's just a beautiful house. And intangible, you know, you can't yeah. quite say what it is. Um, the uh, showdown I was a little little more hesitant about, found it a little bit sort of overdone, yeah. but very powerful. Yeah. Uh, Milner's Association, I, I was just not for a loop. I mean, I think this is Corbusier top form. <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. It's top a third of force, yeah. Not, yeah. not, not, a, not, a, <laughs> not a centimeter out of place. And of course, <laughs> having been brought up on Carpenter Center. Uh, oh yeah, you know, sure. There's an embarrassing, um, amazing yeah, discussion. Yeah, Cousins, but I'll still give the prize to the mill owners. Yeah. And then the museum, which was pretty knocked about, but it was yeah. still, you know, of great interest. So there was all of that. Yeah. Then there was discovering Khan IIM, which uh, was a, another sort of knockout and spending time with Raji uh, over there. But in the background, there were these constant explorations of the mosques. Um, as I told you, I was interested in, you know, many levels of Indian tradition and the architecture of the so-called Sultanate period, which is pre-Mogul, right. was fairly new to me. And that was the first exposure to that uh, in, in Gujarat and how powerful it was. And then there were the step wells, the things you, you, you know. So it was, um, you know, a strong, uh, very strong mix. I, I guess we spent about a week or 10 days hanging around in, in, uh, in Ahmedabad and, and, and camping at the back of, uh, of Sangat. Fantastic. So let's get into it a little bit. Uh, I mean, you, of course, your book is there, but uh, you know, Doshi, Doshi has, you know, greatly learned and schooled in the Khan and and Kabuzia schools. Uh, but how would you connect and contrast his absorption and transformation of Indian history? compared to, let's say, Corbusier or Khan? I mean, wh what is your sense of the uh, discourse here? Uh, yeah, this is complex, I think, uh, yeah, and yeah. Not, not easy to, to really pin down. I mean, first of all, um, Corbusier's interest in, uh, 
uh, in the past is well enough known. And he was very uh, quick to react to certain things when he first came to, to India, the most obvious being the gentlemanta, you know, the right, right, right. Most powerful thing, which kind of transforms into <laughs> his own uh, uh, gentlemanta on top of the uh, parliament. But that's a little bit obvious. Right. Actually, th there's very strong evidence uh, to show that he studied intensively the plans of the Elephanta Cave. Um, the Fanta Caves? Really? Elephanta Cave, yes. Um, you know, which you have the primary axis, then a cross axis, the Gerba Griha, a chamber, yeah. 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 and a processional route. You know, I mean, it's not obvious, but there are right. echoes, you see? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, but I, I think it's silly to be too precise. I think he absorbed, you know, everything. Of course, we know he was fascinated by mud villages. He was interested in Pinjor. He was interested in Mughal tradition. Mm -hmm. um, you know, a, a lot of things. Khan... Um, Khan also had the most extraordinary radar for, for picking up uh, things in, in, in tradition. Mm -hmm. And now I think that there's more of that in Bangladesh, in that building, than there is in, in, the, in IIM. Mm -hmm. um, you know, uh, Raja would like to say it's something to do with Mandu, but I think that's more in Raja's mind than, mm -hmm. than the thing. But the idea of citadels, um, the, the kind of weave of courtyards, of, of, of traditional cities, things like that, mm -hmm. um, you know, the, on that level, I think there are, are resonances. Now, with, with, um, with Doshi, um, you know, I, when I did that book, I actually plunged into his diaries and his private papers. And, and um, it was very, very interesting to see him uh, sort of rediscovering India, if you like, when he came back from being in, in France, you know, he worked with Corbusier for four years. Mm -hmm. And I think um, it's not, you know, direct, but I mean, buildings like the Indology, which I still admire very much, um, obviously has a lot to do with, with things in the Ahmedabadi tradition, with uh, mm -hmm. uh, the, uh, um, e even some of the kind of uh, tectonic values, if you like, of, of the buildings in Sarkej or, or, or whatever. Um, but it becomes more um, sort of overt in, in, uh, in Sangat. I mean, you see, I think things like the School of Architecture with this flowing spaces, all those ideas about village space, communal space, uh, spaces between, were well, on the one hand, his reading of in Indian reality, if you want, and its complexity. On the other hand, it's things that were in the air, in the discourses of Team 10, you know, there's often this sort of two-way uh, thing between international sure. discourses and a reading of a, a local kind, uh, in, in, in the case of Doshi, in fact, in the case of many architects. It, with, with, when he got to Sangat, it was a much more, um, a, a, would I say, self-conscious excavation uh, of, of the past. But there are many pasts in that building. There, it's full of resonances. I mean, there are all the things which, um, you know, he talks about subterranean temples, uh, things that interest him. Uh, he talks about the, you know, the, the, the diagonal search, but those are all Corbusian features as well. They're all things which are, are there. He talks about the in-between spaces of the Indian village, um, uh, the, you know, the interest in, in craft, um, water channels and so forth and so on. But, you know, I did a piece um, actually about, what, three years ago, just before he got the Pritzker, actually, where I talked about a whole other set of um, buried agendas in that building um, to do with Taliesin West, you know. Mm, uh, really? Frank Lloyd, absolutely. Uh, Frank, Frank Lloyd writes Taliesin West, the diagonal. Um, in Phoenix. Yes, yeah. yes, 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 Scottsdale. Yeah, I've been uh, there, yeah, many times, yeah, go ahead. Yes. Yeah. Think about it, think about it. There's platforms, uh, the, um, you know, the, the tent hovering over a space, um, mm -hmm. and the idea of a, um, a sort of uh, monkhood of, uh, of people coming together, and a sisterhood, a nunhood, um, mm -hmm. to, to, towards an ideal. Now, I tested that idea with him, um, uh, about about a year ago, he said, absolutely. He said, that when I had my, um, you know, he, he won a, a, a grant from, um, you know, what's it called in Chicago? The people Graham had, Foundation, yeah. Correct. Um, and he traveled around the States. And when he came to Taliesin, his, he, he was totally transfixed. And he has his notes where he says, I loved it because it's a kind of non-building. It's a mm. kind of non-building. Non I mean, a, a, a field. Yeah. And this was very much in my mind when I designed Sangat. So right, right, it, right, right. Yeah, and no, it also Taliesin has the 
levels and the sunken spaces as well. Yeah, it has the sunken spaces, the kiva, the yeah, yeah. Uh, the, the ritual, the the echoes of of um, you know of pre-Columbian antiquity, of of uh, you know the ancient indigenous uh, Indian societies, um, and of course it's the crudeness of the. Um, material which is almost like a sort of natural slurry you know which uh, with boulders yeah, so yeah, yeah. You, and it I feels mean, of that finish feels does feel have, like all the tile that doshi used it's uh, yes tile. yes yeah, yeah. that's right and, and the concrete with the scraping and so forth yeah it's it's trying to be somewhere between the industrial and the craft um the 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 whole thing with um, except taliesin sits in this wide openness right i mean whereas yes sangat is very much a bounded plot it's a bounded plot although in the early days you could see right across the road uh, for miles <laughs> i remember um, living in it and seeing that so there's that but there's also um you know he was obsessed with his time in the monastic corridor of le corbusier's um atelier in paris um this long narrow space mm-hmm. with corbusier at one end and you yeah. know tick 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 <laughs> and i think also Al- alto's um you know a, a studio at tilimaki with the outdoor theater so there's a, a synthesis of many many things and he had also seen the visa vasef um art center outside cairo with mud vaults mm-hmm. so it's a very um rich mixture of ideas which are pulled together into this nonetheless very tight design and of course way way in the background are, are Corbusier's vaulted solutions of all kinds of course of course of course yeah uh, from Jaul and so on yeah and even earlier you know even the, the unbuilt project for church on north africa which uh, of 1942 with the vaults and the right. again the kind of flirtation with with a, an eternal rural architecture of the mediterranean yeah. in that case yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. Or, 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 or on the other hand, um, you know, the, the importance of Kahn's vaulted solutions. It's like a sort of broken version of, of, a, of a Kahnian vaulted scheme. Okay. So, the, and, and then the earliest project, there were many more vaults up at the front than, than, as well as at the back. So it's, um, th- there's a degree, I don't want to overstress this, but there's a degree of a kind of hidden autobiography in that, in that project. And, and yet it is what it is. It, it's something... Um, that you experience when you come in through the gate. There's this mysterious, you know, uh, vault. With I'll a, call. Yeah, yeah. You know, what's going on here? Yeah, yeah. And then you, you're forced to go left in yeah. this valley with the jars, picking up the diagonal view. Yeah. And then there's this lovely little waterway, which is like a comma, which is like a quotation from the Milonus, actually, uh, <laughs> foreground. And then that pulls you up on the diagonal and round to the back and then back into the building. And he, called, right. and he, he said to me many times, Corbusier always said, don't enter a building directly, go around and go around the back, you know, so on and so on and so on. So, yeah, yeah. so you know, I got to, to, to know this place very, very well by actually living in it, uh, uh, getting, getting to know it in different weather conditions, uh, in a dust storm in the summer where you feel very protected under underground. Of course, it's partly a reaction to the extreme climate, the, the subterranean uh, features of it. Um, I, I remember w- one of the dramatic moments, uh, which I describe in the book, actually, which is um, in 87, I, st- I wrote the first version of the book in, in early 87, went back in the summer of 87, and was there also for the beginning of the monsoon, which is very, very late. Mm. And every day people were watching the television, they're worried about it, what's happening, why isn't the monsoon coming? And uh, I was having dinner with the doshis and I said, well, bye-bye, see you tomorrow. Took a taxi and halfway along Thartej Road, there was a thumping noise. And I thought, God, someone's attacking the car. It was the rain. Mm. And, and the, the people ran out into the streets, women in their saris, you know, yeah. and just welcomed the rain. It was one of those yeah. great Indian moments, you know. Yeah. Yeah. And then I got back and was dropped off and raced from the front gate, but was still totally drenched yeah. uh, in, in the 50 meters between there and the little apartment at the back. But when I looked out, there were camel trains going by with the lightning flashing behind them. It was one of those Indian moments, you know. <laughs> <laughs> so how long did you stay in the apartment? Uh, at well, I stayed many times. Uh, I, I think in that period when I was writing the book, I must have been about four, three or four weeks, I, I, I guess. Uh, it was a kind of, uh, I would have my breakfast there and then, uh, you know, hang around in the garden until people turned up. It was a very interesting uh, period.
Uh-huh. So, uh, ha- what is your sense of the, you know, I mean, uh, I, I've read your book. I'm not sure everybody who's listening may may have read your book on Doshi. Uh, so, but but what is now? In any case, looking back, what is your sense? I mean, Doshi is still still active. I mean, it's unbelievable. He's he's, he's, he's very active and in good health and and doing well. Yeah. Uh, Indeed. Yeah, so so that we we all know the sort of the Kabuzi years and early years of Doshi, but how would you describe the uh, development of his thinking or his and his career and work? Let's say mid eighty onwards. Like, how, what what do you think is the progression there? Well, you see, um, immediately after Sangat, there was the Gandhi Labor Institute. Yeah. Yeah. Use the same. Um, language to to a degree um, and some of the same uh, basic concepts. Uh, yeah. um, when when you follow uh, Doshi's later work, there's there's a lot more fragmentation. Uh, it's less tight, I would say, yeah. altogether than than that early period. With, and um, the I, I think that um, you know with Doshi, one of the things that that uh, drew me to him was not just the architect, but it was the uh, the thinker and the person who was uh, trying to read on many levels uh, Indian society mm-hmm. uh, with the help of the Vastu Shilpa Foundation, you know, masses yeah. of research projects on typologies of old towns, mm-hmm. um, mm-hmm. trying to conceive a new urbanism that was, a, you know, like uh, the, the project for the new Jaipur, which was a kind of hybrid of Shandigarh and of... Um, um, traditional Hindu urbanism as mm-hmm. conceived in the 18th century in, mm-hmm. in Jaipur. Yeah. Uh, all, all very interesting, but it never... Fabulous project. Here, I'll show you. I have one of his prints right here. Ah, uh, there we go. Uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, no, it's a, 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 marvelous, uh, yeah. a marvelous thing. Yeah. So, uh, but, you know, when you get to the Diamond Workers Union building or whatever that was called, this great fragmented thing, I think there are problems of scale that enter in, you know. So, um, you know, it, it turned into a different practice as well with others involved and, uh, and, so, and so it goes on. Um, but, you know, I think that the, uh, to me, the, um, in addition to the architecture, there's a, let's say a value system uh, uh, operating in, in, in Doshi, which is of great, importance. I mean, in a deeper sense, he was a humanist, if you want to call him that, mm-hmm. a sense of the spiritual, mm-hmm. a sense of what counts in the long term in society, mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. and uh, wanted to, quote unquote, produce a better world through architecture. You know, this right. is what it boils down to, you know. Right. So. right. Yeah, indeed. I mean, I totally agree with you that for Doshi, it was a, a complete philosophy, is it still a complete philosophy, a complete uh, search about how to be in the world That's it. And, how, and, and how to uh, uh, be an absorber of everything, right? I mean, he, 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 was, he was such a palimpsest, he is such a palimpsest of a person and, a, and, and an architect, uh, you know, everything kind of absorbs into his memory from ancient stories of his own uh, own house, his father-in-law's house, he talk, always talks about. And then, of course, the Doshi, uh, not the Kabuzier, uh, Raje, Kabuzier Khan, uh, that whole ethos. But every all the time you get a sense that he's searching, he's searching, he's searching. He's always turning over stones, trying to look for more things. A very curious and open mind. Oh, definitely. And there's also the importance of drawing, you know, yeah. uh, exploring things through, uh, through, through drawing. Um, he, he would uh, claim that this is, these, all the things you describe are among the things that inspired him in Le Corbusier, because Corbusier had his eyes open at all times to everything. Right. Um, and, and was constantly, let's say, involved in a metamorphosis. And that, that gets me to another, um, you know, aspect of our time in Ahmedabad. Um, we, we went back in 84 um, in the spring, uh, well, spring, I mean, like February or whatever, uh, uh, arriving in Delhi, going first of all to Jodhpur, 
uh, and then finding a driver and driving around the Tar Desert in, in dust storms, which was quite an experience. Going to Jaisalmer, of course, mm -hmm. which was a pilgrimage place for a whole generation of people uh, looking for a new sense of uh, containable urban space, you know, right. complexity, I mean, especially Raj Rewal, but I mean, of course. Yeah. And, and then, you know, cutting across to Ranakpur, which is still to me, one of the highest points of Indian architecture, the great Jain temple at Ranakpur. Mm -hmm. And then finally down into Ahmedabad, where we received an exhibition, which I had first prepared and shown in the Carpenter Center at Harvard when I taught there, which was called Fragments of Invention, the Sketchbooks of Le Corbusier which was exactly what it says it is. And it was blow ups from pages of these sketchbooks with some of the original sketchbooks in that case. And it was all about metamorphosis, about observation and transformation, observation and transformation. And the centerpiece of it was the parliament building in Chandigarh because they had all these fantastic sketches showing him, you know, coming up with those ideas and the cosmology of them and the, you know, the moon and the sun and the this and the that. And I even had a wonderful, you know, the red section, you know, brought from Paris. And well, when this came to India, we couldn't have all these, uh, you know, things from the Fondation, but we uh, set it up in the Hattasing Center. Mm -hmm. um, everything arrived very, very late. And I put it all together at the last minute with three carpenters. And, uh, you know, the last nail went into place and then we opened the doors and in poured the, the Sarabais and the rustle of saris and, oh, it's wonderful and so forth and so on. So, you know, this... Um, aspect of Corbusier, which I discussed very much with, with uh, Doshi from my point of view as a historian, I've been interested in that going way back to my work on Carpenter Center 10 years before. Mm -hmm. uh, it, it, it really hit a, it chimed with him very much so because that's certainly the way he looked at the, at, at the world, uh, definitely. Right. Yeah. Uh, uh, before we move on from Doshi, how do you read uh, the Gufa? How do you read the Hussein Doshi Gufa? That's a truly a, a very different kind of a work, is it not? Yes, it is. I'm, I'm less keen on it. Um, you know, I, I'm, you know it, it has a kind of intriguing theatricality about it. Um, but, um, you know, I think I said yesterday that one of the things that uh, uh, in, intrigues me about that generation is when they're still in high tension, breaking away from the quote unquote masters. Mm -hmm. It's in that high tension that they achieve their best work. I mean, that Sangat has freedom, it has all the things we can discuss, but it also has a tremendous sense of order, you know. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, I'm a little bit less keen on, on, <laughs> on, the, <laughs> on this subterranean, subterranean grotto. Uh, you know, uh, yeah. Yeah. Right, 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 right. Yeah, no, I, I, I must admit, I quite like the building. I remember. I think I was, uh, I don't know what I was doing at Sangat. I, I, I stayed, I didn't stay in the apartment, but I was working on, uh, on, on some interviews with Doshi when he was designing the Gufa. And I remember him playing with this uh, mud. You know, yes. he had this box and he had this mud and he was putting his hand in there and he was crafting it all with his hand out and he was making it. And he was like, he would always say, <gasps> Come, 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 see. I have, you know, this is what is happening. Watching around. Yeah, 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 yeah. 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 It was a, a sense of play. Yeah, yeah. An immense yeah. sense of play, like a, a amazing childlike innocence to it, you know. And here was this Doshi, and, you know, with all the uh, credentials and, 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 and what a history. But I was so fascinated by how playful he was in the design of it. Yes. Uh, kind of really just having fun. Uh, yes, uh, uh, and in the end, it, it's a unique project in, in my estimation. Like, it it it's kind of like a I'm going to open this door and see what happens. Uh, and and he looked at it, did something over there, and then moved on and did other things. But uh, it's a, quite an experiment. It reminds me very much of the you know the old uh, like if you take a one of the Ajanta caves or even the Elephanta caves, you know, you take it and then you put it through kind of like a, 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 a morpher of some kind of a, of those funny mirrors. Yes. And, and it distorts and reconfigures and, and suddenly it has some catenary curves and other things happening in it. Uh, and it becomes something else. That's how I like no, it. No, yeah, you can put it that way. Of course, there's always Gaudi somewhere in the background. Of course, it. of course, Gaudi. Including, including so. in Sangat. Um, 
Yeah, no, all, all, all you say is, uh, is, is true. Um, it's still a matter, I suppose I've just got very hooked on Sangat, you know, that's um, sort of anchored sure. in, in Sangat and keep coming back to it. And this is, gets to another, another point, which is since we've talked about books yesterday and your, you know, your book and assembling it. And well, one of the things I found fascinating was, you know, working in the garage, finding all these bits lying around, putting together an archive and then getting the Son Canadian Dash that you're interested in. You know, all of that was terrific, you know. Well, you know, doing the, the book on Doshi was quite an adventure uh, because mm -hmm. while I did the, the text and all the text for the individual projects and then actually added at the last minute something which I reread re recently. Um, I'm just going to look it up again. Yeah, author's postscript, the future of Indian architecture. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. it's absolutely worth reading because some of it was un uncannily correct. <laughs> but, but, uh, you know, this is written on a, a, a dining room table in July the 1st, 1987, I think, or whenever. Um, so the book was uh, largely um, completed as a text in, in the summer of 87 when I went back to, to, uh, to India in the heat. But the design kind of came to... Uh, a halt, it's things, I don't, I'm not sure what it happened exactly in the autumn. And so when I came back in the winter, I expected to see the book and it was, you know, there were two chapters designed. Mm -hmm. And uh, anyway, I won't go into details, but uh, that evening I was back in Delhi at some fancy party and uh, was introduced to a very elegant uh, young man called Aman Nat. Mm -hmm. And Aman said, oh, I've heard all about you, William. And you know, there's a sort of Delhi society. Um, but you look very troubled. I said, well, I am troubled. He said, well, why are you troubled? I said, well, I've just been in Ahmedabad and, you know, I've written this book about Doshi and I thought it was all designed. And in fact, it's not designed and um, I don't know what to do. He said, well, I'll design it. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> I said, what? He said, yes, I'd be happy to do that with you. That would be a project. And he did. Yeah, yeah. Beautiful we, book, yeah. Anyway, we did the design on a um, a kitchen table in, in the Gulf Links Road, you know, <laughs> uh, and, uh, you know, with those very high quality black and white prints that you could get in, in, uh, in, in, in India and, uh, and, and eventually put the whole thing um, uh, uh, together. And there was a nice, let me just, yeah, well, this was, you know, you know in this period, this period by this later part, there's another uh, element in the story, which is that my father-in-law had been appointed as U.S. ambassador to, to yeah, India. Yeah, that's an amazing part of it. Tell, yeah, talk a little bit more about that. Well, you see, my, my India was, uh, you know, there years before, and it was, of course, a more modest India when it came yeah. to places to stay. Um, but he was given the post of... Um, uh, of India in late, uh, let's see, uh, early 86, I think it was. And, and uh, by Reagan, Reagan was, yeah. Uh, oh Christ, I have to tell you. Yeah, yeah, I'm sure it's Reagan, yeah, go ahead. Yeah. Sorry, sorry to put it this way. Yeah. But, uh, he was a career diplomat. It was usually not a career diplomat, but a political uh, appointee. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, he set to work. And of course it meant there was the uh, access to the residence. Um, mm. And there was a bungalow at the end of the garden uh, designed by the Moynihan, so that when we had a child, we could go and spend time there. And then I would be off in Ahmedabad working on things. So this introduced another dimension to the whole, you know, the whole experience of, uh, of, uh, of being there, which, uh, you know, you can imagine. And also it meant we were in Delhi quite a lot. So while in Ahmedabad, I developed, of course, a tremendous friendship with Anant Raji, um, and a great admiration, by the way, for his, uh, his work, which is now under threat, too, at IIM. Some right, 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 um, right. I also got to know a lot more about what was going on in Delhi and became very good friends with Raj Rewal, who I'd already written, written uh, about. So all of this added other you know, dimensions to the, to the time in, uh, in India. Mm, yeah. So uh, uh, if I may, if we may return a little bit to the topic we touched on in our, in our previous conversation, uh, after all this, uh, you, 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 you sort of uh, returned to Europe for a decade and really got involved in, and, and wrote amongst many things on, on the work of Enric Mirales uh, yes. and, and Carmen Pinos. Uh, I, I never, I never met uh, either of them. I have met Benedetta later on. Uh, I've been yes. to the office a few times, and I, and and I am absolutely mesmerized uh, 
by their work. Uh, and I remember Benedetta telling me that uh, Cabusier was it for Miraris and, and he, his journey to India and to Chandigarh uh, was like a major pilgrimage the one time he, he traveled over there. So I'd be very interested in, you know, uh, I know I know the essays in Crocus. Uh, you know, how did you, what drew you to Mirais and what were... You know, well, let, let me say this, it was, uh, Mirais was just uh, one among 15 or so uh, Spanish architects that I yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. dedicated quite intense texts to. Right. Um, I became uh, extremely interested in Spanish modern architecture in the late 80s, mm -hmm. when my book was trans uh, Modern Architecture, the first edition was translated into, into Spanish. And, um, you know, spent time in, in, uh, in, in Spain at that time. I wrote a monograph on Carlos Ferrater, the uh, uh, the archi Barcelona architect in mm. 89, became, wrote a major text about De La Sota, you know, for the architect from the 50s and 60s. Uh, so this was a kind of flowering of, uh, of interest in a very rich period. Uh, the 80s was a very rich period in, in Spanish architecture and indeed in Portuguese architecture. Mm -hmm. And eventually the people from El Croquis uh, uh, contacted me and they said, we're so interested in your approach, perhaps we can collaborate. So. Yeah, Marias and Pinos was was one, uh, but then there was Juan Navarro Baldeve, then there was Moneo, uh, then there was uh, you know Caesar, then there was etc. 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 So so why this a, fascination with Spain in particular? Well, because there was such strength to this work. It was fresh, inventive. I wouldn't write. I never write about anything unless I find it moving. You know. Yeah, but, yeah. Of course. What's the point? Yeah. Have a kind of emotional charge. But when you encounter something like the uh, Palacio de Congresos in Salamanca with its floating dome by mm -hmm. Juan Navarro Valdeveg or, you, or, or Merida, the museum by, by Moneo. Mm -hmm. These were, this was a very fertile period uh, in, in Spanish architecture. Um, and I was therefore interested in trying to chart it. And one of the things about El Croquis was I didn't like the kind of mugshot, you know, star system aspect, but the quality of their publication yeah, uh, very for showing you, you know, how buildings were, you know, designed and put together, and the freedom one was given ed editorially, um, made it a very good way to sort of produce a, a prehistory. It's not quite history. It's not just criticism, but a series of reflections on, on in depth on these various uh, uh, architects. It didn't, it didn't st stop there. I did one on Ando. I did one on Herzog de Meuron when they were really interesting, which was in the nineties, rather less mm -hmm. so since I would say. So th th there was a, you know, a, mo a momentum uh, which uh, may have started with uh, Marias and Pinos, but it was especially the Igualada Cemetery. Yeah. But uh, it was not just, uh, not just them. Got it, got it. But, but uh, would you describe Marias and Pinos as part of this pantheon of uh, flourishing in, in Spain at this time or... Uh, do you would you single them out in any way? Well, you see, um, I, 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 in the end, I think when we talk about the evaluation of architecture, we have to talk about buildings rather than 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 oeuvre or, or personalities or whatever. And I still rate uh, the Iguarada Cemetery very high. Uh, yeah. In fact, it's no accident that I used it to almost uh, the last building in the third edition of Modern Architecture since 1900, which was published in 96. You see, the way I tend to work is I go out into the world and I'm, you know, bowled over by a building or whatever, and then there's a reflection, then probably there's a text. But then later, there's the question of integrating it into the big, you know, the big story. Uh, mm -hmm. And when I did the third edition of Modern Architecture, I said I, uh, yesterday, the second edition was done in 87 with just an addendum, mm -hmm. but which already included Sangat, already included, uh, um, uh, you know, the Forestry Commission building by Raje, it included mm -hmm. uh, 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 something by Charles, can't remember what it was, you know, yeah. but I mean, in India was woven with a whole lot of other things. Right. Um, I'd done an article in Architecture Record called Contemporary Transformations of Modern Architecture, which deliberately cut across all frontiers, which was published in 89. Well, this, this attitude was carried through. But then when I did the third edition, I exploded the book and added seven new chapters and integrated India in all kinds of ways and also right. integrated my discoveries of Spain. Yeah. And that's the way I try to work is from 
um, it's not kind of just looking up, uh, you know, catalog. It, it's often very much from the gut. Mm. <laughs> you know, when I saw when I saw the Maravillas Gymnasium by by Della Sota in, uh, in in 1989, I thought, wow, what a you know masterpiece! I never knew about this. So so there's this very visceral, direct attitude uh, behind these texts, if I mm. can put it that way. It was the same with India, you know. It was the same with uh, my attraction to the to the best of the best of the work in India. Uh, okay, so as we are, you know, we are moving towards the final part of our, this this conversation. So let's talk about the present. Uh, let's talk about your thoughts on where architecture is today in the in this kind of whatever you want to call it globalized period with uh, big star architects practicing around the world, huge concentration in East Asia and the Middle East. Uh, what are your thoughts about architecture today and where it's going? Well, it's going in many, many directions at once. <coughs> I mean, you can't, uh, uh, for one second, posit a single uh, line. Um, and this is a real challenge in terms of, uh, of evaluation. You know, what, what, what do you think is significant? What do you not think? And also there's a tremendous surplus of information now. You know, this is a, you know, whereas I was going on a sort of lack of information in the early eighties, now there's just, you know, endless bombardment of, uh, of, of, uh, of images of, uh, you know, et cetera. Um, so I, I, rather than get involved in dropping names, if I may not, uh, Please. I would say it's obviously a pluralist situation um, that um, the, the issue of, of architectural quality always shines through. It transcends matters of style. It transcends matters of ideology. I, I wrote a piece um, oh, way back, uh, published in ARK, the Finnish thing, which is called the, the taking the long view. I mean, the need when you evaluate buildings to, to perhaps appreciate their freshness, but equally appreciate when they incarnate in some manner longer term architectural values uh, in, in the, uh, so, so that, that's, uh, you know, if I start on names, we never stop, you know, and right, right, right. of course, I'm, you know, I'm following, you know, all right, well, then I can say that among the architects that have interested me a great deal in the last uh, 15 years, more uh, Spanish or Catalan architects, which is Aranda Pigem Vilalta, RCR, mm -hmm. um, who, uh, you know, produce amazing work in relation to landscape, uh, abstract, but very resonant, very poetic, very rigorous. Um, you know, they were given the Pritzker, what, about three years ago? Right, not right, that, right. Not that I care too much about the Pritzker, but, uh, you know, there, there, there are people like this that pop up that have, you know, that, that are the real thing. And uh, I've actually written, you know, quite a lot about, uh, um, about that. But then there are old timers. You know, I've just finished a, quite a long text about Leviska, the very fine, Finnish architect who did these wonderful churches in the 80s and 90s, and they're still doing fine work. So I try to keep a, a open radar uh, as to, um, you know, what's going on in different parts of the world. And as I said before, I like to, as much as possible, say, well, that's interesting, but I want to go and experience it. I've got to walk through those spaces. Mm -hmm. I've got to know if that really comes off or, 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 or not, you know, so that's, uh, that's the way I would put it. Uh, Fantastic. Uh, well, I think we have come to the present. We have done a long journey. Uh, we have started in the late 70s, even the early 70s, uh, and come to the present. What do you want to close this out with? What are your uh, thoughts? My, well, my goodness, uh, <laughs> what are my thoughts? Well, where... Where, where India is concerned, um, you, you know full well from, we discussed this yesterday, and it, I think it's known, um, I've got quite involved in the whole problem of um, protection modern heritage, uh, the protection of modern heritage in, in, in India uh, against the ravages of, uh, you know, laissez-faire economics, against uh, all the different forces which can uh, disrupt, you know, when the Hall of Nations was pulled down by Rewal, this was really a a tragedy of the first, uh, the first order. Um, so, you know, the, 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 and then when it comes to the, 
the quote unquote masters, um, I feel that their lessons are still there. You know, I, I don't, I never was interested in neo Corbusian architecture or neo Kanyan architecture. Um, but I do feel that there's a long wave um, motion in history, you know, that some buildings are very short wave, others are medium wave, and then others are kind of long wave, they keep being rediscovered. Mm. Uh, some, some years ago, I went back to Dhaka, Bangladesh for the first time in 25 years, and discovered a generation who were deeply involved with Khan, and, but doing, doing very inventive things with it uh, in relation to the uh, to, to the present. And I had sort of forecast that with the Chetana. You remember Chetana group? Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah, 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 yeah. They yeah, had yeah. a wonderful correspondence with Marlowe's Islam uh, yeah. back then and say, well, you know, all this will carry in the long, in, in the long, uh, in the long term. But these are very idealistic positions in a world of extremely um, destructive forces, you know, in mm. the kind of uh, urban development and ecology and, and, and so forth. This uh, tricky, uh, tricky questions. So I'm, you know, always interested in, and of course I do go back to, you know, I told you the plunging into antiquity. I, I look at my notebooks a great deal of, of Indian temples, my photographs, and I'm thinking it's time to put an exhibition together, gorgeous pictures of Fatako Sikri. Mm. Those, those things carry, you know, quote unquote, eternal messages as far as I'm concerned, you know. But, uh, you know, every generation will look at them in a different way, no doubt, you know. I'm sure. I'm sure. William, it has been such a pleasure. Well, the to, same. To, to connect uh, and uh, reconnect and to have the opportunity to record uh, these two detailed conversations with you, to share old memories, okay. to... to recount the adventures of your life. And I just want to, on the behalf, on my own behalf, but also on behalf of a whole generation of uh, historians and, and thinkers and, and architects, uh, thank you for uh, all the work that you have done, all the sort of inspiration that you have provided, and veritably for transforming the landscape of uh, modern architectural thinking. I think uh, that's not an exaggeration I think uh, your work and your well, thoughts are nice. happening Thank you. here. Yeah, no, no, there's no doubt about it. Uh, your book, uh, Modern Architecture since 1900, is still the standard text in every modern architecture course that I seem to run into. Uh, and all kinds of discourses have come out of it and I have encountered them in many registers and I uh, never fail to tell whenever I'm in one of these conversations. Yes, I met William Curtis in 1980, well before even the first edition was published. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, right. no, no, that's very touching. Thank you. I, you know, I'm a, a lone wolf, you know, I'm not part of a university department or anything. I just plow on and and uh, if, if the thoughts are communicated and they touch people and and open, open eyes in some way, open minds, it's, uh, it's touching to me. So thank you very much for saying all that. But anyway, yeah. Vikram, we must remain in touch more often and not wait 15 years or 20 years each time. I agree. I agree very much. We will, I will be sure, we'll be sure to do that. And, and I think that, you know, since you're saying nice things about my work, I, 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 under no obligation at all, I, I, I think the, the book you've done on your father's work is, is really a, a, a tremendous achievement. You know, it's, a, it's an achievement, not just of documentation and of assembly of things, but of, of, of reflection on, on a you know, person who's central in your life, but also uh, an era in Indian architecture um, and even in more than just India. Um, so I think it's a very uh, key book and I'm sure it'll have a lot of uh, interesting critical reactions because it's, you know, it's come out into the into the public realm, um, and it's very finely produced too. You know, Mappin did a nice job there. So anyway, so well done, and uh, you know, I look forward to uh, hearing more of what you and your generation have to say about the global. We haven't touched that word, but mm -hmm. you know, I will say this. I mean, I don't want to blow my own trumpet, but I was actually a little bit ahead of the pack on some of these questions uh, of. Um, there was a very interesting PhD thesis written about modern architecture since 1900 by a, a lady called Macarena de la Vega de Leon, I'll send you the link, called Intertwined Histories. And she's, she got it, 
you know, this yeah. importance of, uh, you know, in, in intertwining of different societies. Of yeah, yeah. Intertwined. And, and of course, you know, the very much so about integrating the so-called developing world into the global picture and treating it in exactly the same manner as, as any, anything else. I mean, there's something, well, no, that, that's not quite right. It's not exactly the same, but giving equal weight to major work from, from what were once called peripheral countries, but they were never peripheral to me. You know, my, my center was always moving around peripheries and my peripheries were always moving around my centers, even pretty early on, you know. So this is all very interesting to me because the world we're in is very different and there are younger historians looking at these things in, in, in new ways, which um, I'm interested to know about. Well, perhaps so, in a little time, we'll have to record another conversation and start on the global. Yeah, yeah sure. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's okay, do that. This was all great. Right. Very nice to see you again and uh, all, all the best. Sir. Thank you. All right. Thank you for listening to Architecture Talk. This is your producer, Amelia Jarvanen. We hope you enjoyed the conversation. And if you did, please subscribe and rate us on iTunes or Spotify. We would also love to hear from you if you have any suggestions on new topics or guests. You can always reach out to us on our website, Facebook, or Instagram. Thanks again. And until next time, this is Architecture Talk. <laughs>